So probably one of my favorite moments of the debate last night was um, that moment where Joe Biden tried to weasel out of talking about China and goes into politician mode and President Trump does not let him get away. But before we get into that, my name is Greg Foreman and you're watching A Black Conservative Perspective. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share A Black Conservative Perspective, aka A Liberal's Worst Nightmare. You can also follow me on Twitter at GForemanBCP. Let's get it. All right, guys, take a look at this clip of the exchange between President Trump and Joe Biden in regards to China in which uh, Biden tries to weasel his way out of the conversation. President Biden, your response, please. My response is, look, this isn't about, there's a reason why he's bringing up all this malarkey. There's a reason for it. He doesn't want to talk about the, the, su the substantive issues. It's not about his family and my family. It's about your family. And your family's hurting badly. If you're making less than, if you're a middle class family, you're getting hurt badly right now. You're sitting at the kitchen table this morning deciding, well, we can't get new tires, they're bald because we have to wait another month or so. Or are we going to be able to pay the mortgage? Or who's going to tell her she can't go back to, to community college? They're the decisions you're making in the middle class families like I grew up in Scranton and Claymont. They're in trouble. We should be talking about your families, but that's the last thing he wants to talk about. I want, to, is a I want to talk about statement. North Korea. Me, I do want to second, turn to please. 10 seconds, Mr. President. That's 10 a seconds. typical political statement. Let's get off this China thing. And then he looks, the family, around the table, everything. Just right. a typical politician when I see that. Let's talk I'm about North Korea. I'm not a typical Korea politician. Okay, That's President. why I got elected. That let's was, talk let's about get off the subject of China. Let's talk around, sitting around the table. All right. Come on, Joe, you can do better. We're going to talk about. This is why I love President Trump, guys. This is why I love President Trump. Because he's not a politician. He doesn't give these canned BS platitudes and speeches that all the politicians do every time they don't really want to talk about something. Where they sit and they do the same speech over and over and over again. Well, you know, this is not about China. This is not about families. This is about uh, American people sitting down at the kitchen table deciding how they're going to pay their bills. This is about the mom that is stressed out and blah, 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 blah. Okay, Joe, if you care so much about these families sitting at the table figuring out how, to, how they're going to pay their bills, why is it that you're advocating for the country to stay shut down? Why is it that you're not pushing Nancy Pelosi to come to an agreement on this stimulus deal? But we all know that Joe doesn't really care about the families that's struggling right now. He doesn't care. Only thing Joe cares about is trying to get elected and not trying to have his corruption come to the light when it comes to what went on in China between him, uh, Hunter Biden, and Jim Biden. And that's what this is really all about. Joe Biden was an HOE who didn't want to rat out his pimp because he was afraid that he was going to get the pimp hand from China. That, that's all it was. That's all it was. And if our media actually did their jobs, if they did their jobs, they would have asked Joe Biden. The moderator would have said, OK, well, Joe, we have Tony Bobolinsky, who's a vet and was in the Navy that came out and said that he was a business partner of Hunter and that you are the big man. Can you explain where this is coming from? Is he lying? But see, we can't get that. We can't get a fair and honest conversation and get the questions answered that we need to get answered because the media won't do their jobs. But at the same time, President Trump, I think, should have pressed them a little bit harder on that and been more specific about the allegations. That way, Joe couldn't try to weasel and politician his way out of the question. However, this was probably President Trump's best moment at the debate. Because I think what he showed the American people was this is who politicians are. You can't believe anything they say. And once you start to get to the truth, you get close to the truth. They deflect to trying to play off of your emotions to avoid trying to answer the questions. Um, I think President Trump did a great, 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 great job of calling Biden out on that. Because quite honestly, God, that's something I'm tired of seeing in the debates. I'm tired of seeing it. It, it has been one of my biggest pet peeves um, at these debates for the longest, longest, longest time. It, it's the people that sit here and just give platitudes all day long. They don't say anything. They don't give any policies. And quite honestly, guys, I, I think these debate formats should be changed because of this type of stuff where we should have a whole two or three hour debate where we just talk about the economy because there's so many different things we can talk about when it comes to the economy that the American people should know that we can't squeeze into a little 
10 minute segment where politicians can just run out the time and run out the clock by giving platitudes and general speeches and going into politician mode and not saying anything and not answering the questions on what they're actually going to do. This is why the debate formats need to be changed. Do you notice every time the politicians talk about Corona, the one thing all they do is talk about how many people died. They spend literally 80 to 90 percent of the time talking about what President Trump did bad and uh, the statistics rather than actually talking about what they're going to do to make it better. Joe Biden did not have to expand on any plans when it comes to Corona whatsoever. I want to know what the plan is. Since you claim you're going to do so much better than President Trump, what is your plan? We don't have no explanation on it. Yes, they didn't talk about Biden's tax plan at all, guys. They didn't talk about Biden's tax plan at all. That's a big deal. Biden's tax plan is going to be taxing people at a top marginal rate of 60%. But they did not address that at all, guys. That's how much our priorities are out of line when it comes to these debates. But they spent three, four debates talking about race. Race, guys. But we spent no time talking about Biden's tax plan. It's absolutely insane. And guys, essentially what I'm saying is that the American people is just not getting enough information from these debates. And just as evidence is what I'm saying is how we've got nothing out of Joe Biden, check out this focus group from uh, Frank Lutz in which they asked uh, the group how they felt about Joe Biden's responses tonight. A word or phrase to describe Joe Biden from tonight's debate. Elizabeth, I'm gonna start with you. Joe Biden, um, lie. Oh, Joe Biden, uh, vague. James. Vague, very vague. How are Non specific. Jim. Cognitively impaired. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I smell a lawsuit here. Uh, Keith. I don't want to say senile, so I'll say old. Tasha. Chasing. Jennifer. Uncomfortable. Keita. Drunk. Okay, I, I smell two lawsuits here. Eric. Elusive. Steven. Grandfatherly. John. Defensive. Say that again. Defensive. Defensive. And Jill, last one. Big US. Vague. They didn't get anything out of it. They didn't get anything out of it. So, I mean, guys, I'm starting to get to the point where I just feel like these debates are almost a waste of time. I mean, the format is just so bad. It's, it's so terrible. American people just not getting the answers that they deserve. So we need to start having a debates where we break down the topics where it's like, OK, maybe four or five where one one is about health care. One is about the economy. You know, one about foreign policy. One is about domestic policy. We need to have a more thorough breakdown of these topics so that these politicians can't just sit here and and BS us all day like they try to do. Or they start talking about their families. I'm the son of a, you know, a, a electrician or a plumber. And, you know, uh, my mom raised me with this values and that value. It's like, bro, I don't want to hear any of that. What are you going to do for this country? What have you done and what are you going to do? That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear all that other stuff. I don't care about your family. I'm keeping it 100. When it comes to these politicians, I don't care about your family. I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to hear your sad sob stories. I don't want to hear your generalities. I want to hear what are you going to do for us? How are you going to help the American citizens? That, that's what I want to know. How are you going to help me help myself? How is the government going to get out of the way? So that's my opinion on that. Great job of President Trump on calling Biden out on his BS and not letting him just politician his way out of, um, you know, not talking about China. I thought it was one of his best moments. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.